Good evening, and welcome to the City Council Candidate Forum for the four East Multnomah County cities of Fairview, cities of Gresham, Troutdale, and Wood Village. This evening's forum is sponsored by the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County, with co-sponsors of Metro East Community Media, Gresham Area Branch of American Association of University Women, and the Coalition of Gresham Neighborhood Associations. I'd also like to thank the City of Gresham for the use of the Council Chamber tonight. I'm Lorraine Griffey, a member of the League of Women Voters of East Multnomah County, and will be your moderator for the evening. The forum is being televised by Metro East Community Media and will re be replayed. Tonight's forum will be di divided into three groups, with the City of Fairview in the first group, City of Gresham in the second group, and the cities of Troutdale and Wood Village in the third group, with a five-minute break between the changes moving candidates. During this time, and before audience leaves tonight, hopefully everyone will pick up a League of Women Voters Voters Guide and a vote411.org card, which will help provide your own voting information online. Questions have been prepared by the League of Women Voters. Three questions will be asked of each of the candidates with 90 seconds to answer each question, followed by questions from the audience. The audience is invited to submit questions for the candidates on the cards provided. If you need a card, raise your hand and one of the league members will bring it to you. Timekeepers for tonight are Susan Foster, and Sharon Rent, and Susan Fry. At 30 seconds remaining, a green warning card will be raised. 15 seconds remaining, a yellow card will be raised, and when the red card is raised, candidates will be cut off. So now I'd like to introduce the candidates for the City of Fairview for position two, Barbara Jones and Ken Quinby. For positions three, Brian Cooper. Six. And Tammy T Telestris and Arnold. Did I get it right? Close okay. enough. Close. <laughs> Each candidate will be allowed two minutes opening and two minutes closing with 90 seconds to respond to each question. So we'll start with the first question for you, Barbara. What experience and expertise would you bring to the office? We get to open. open we get to open. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> you need an opening. That would help. Wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm sorry. Would you like to start your, your opening? Thank you. First of all, I want to thank the League of Women Voters and, and all of your supporters for having us here tonight. My name is Barbara Jones, and I am the incumbent for position two of uh, the City Council for Fairview. I decided to run again because there's so many things still out in the open up out down there that that I would really like to see finished before I step away from my seat. The Ranger is kind of on a hold at this point, but I would like to see it c to continue. I would like to see our budget get back to a reasonable place that we can bring all of our employees back. And there's just many other things that, that little things that uh, I would like to see done before we, before I, I step down. Mm. I've been on the council for almost 12 years. I think that Ken's here been actually 12 years and I missed two years in there. So I'm probably 10 years. But, and I've done a lot on the council. I've learned a lot and I've learned to love my city. I don't think I have ever loved a city as much as I do Fairview. So I hope that I answer the questions tonight um, that uh, everybody wants to hear, and I hope that you'll vote for me. Ken Quinby. Hi, I'm Ken Quinby. I am vacating my seat and running for seat number two. Everybody's identified what we need to do and where we have shortcomings, but nobody's identified how that's going to happen. I spend the majority of my time in the streets in Fairview talking to business owners, talking to citizens, finding out what their concerns are, and I believe that 
the economic development that is the only way that we're going to enhance our revenue in the future. That means the undeveloped land, the underdeveloped land in our city, we need to market aggressively, we need to reduce city fees, we need to take a look at how we're going to come up with the money to proceed in the future in the manner that everybody agrees we need to do, but nobody has any ideas on how we're going to do it. I've been 12 and a half years on the city council. I've been in the Five County Regional Emergency Management Policy Board. I've been on the Board of Directors of East Metro Economic Alliance. I am attended the majority of the meetings over the years. I think that I am the best person to move the city forward in a manner that's gonna enhance our revenue. And that's what it seems to be all about right now. Everybody's got a budget shortfall, but nobody has any ideas on how to do that. And I think I'm the best person to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. Brian Cooper for position six. Hi, I'm Brian Cooper. I'm, I'm the current incumbent to position six. I am filling the seat that has been vacated by my late father, uh, who has a, was a city council for many years. Um, and I'm currently on the committees for uh, the Riverfront Development and the USS Ranger and on the Regional Emergency Preparedness Committee. Uh, I believe I bring a lot of strengths to this position that even my father didn't have. I have a lot of free time that allows me to attend all the meetings, public meetings that we hold. I, I attend all committee meetings, uh, morning meetings. I was currently at the inner council meeting this morning. Uh, and I think, I think that I am going to be a strong asset for the city of Fairview. Thanks. Thank you. And Tammy? Good evening. My name is Tammy Telestis Arnold, and I'm running for position number six. Um, I'm a registered nurse, and I also own a business in the city of Fairview. I have a very long and deep um, roots to the community. I have uh, went to Gresham High School and graduated from there, went to Mount Hood Community College, and also attended nursing school in Portland. Um, in addition to owning a business, I am very, very, very active in my community. I have over 20 years of experience um, working with the community, developing relationships, working with businesses. Um, I'm, I'm probably the most qualified candidate to fill this position. Um, I unfortunately don't have you know, uh, the laurels to fall on, um, but I do have my own credentials to fall upon. And I plan on creating a vision um, that will carry our city into the future and out of its current economic struggles. Thank you. Now we'll start our, our questions. Okay. We'll have 90 seconds. What experience and expertise would you bring to the office, Barbara? The experience I have is already being on council for so many years. I've developed relationships with the city staff and with the rest of the councilors and the mayor that makes us work as a cohesive unit. The, what was the question again? What experience, experience and expertise? Expertise, okay. Um, the, well, and I, okay, now I'm lost. <laughs> um, I, uh, I've been in quote unquote politics for many, many, many years, I was deeply involved in it in high school, thanks to my mother. And um, I learned a lot then, but I've learned so much from the city of Fairview that it's, it's, it's very easy for me to, to look at something and say, well, you know, we don't know about this and we don't know about that. And, it's, and I'm not afraid to go ask questions. And I'm not afraid to question the people who come to the to the city for different things that they need I don't always agree with them I'd sometimes agree with them and I think what this election is going to be all about is like Ken said economic development and I I think econo economic development is absolutely the only way that we're going to bring our budget back together but I'm going to make sure that it's not to the detriment of our citizens Thank you. Kim, the same question. What experience and expertise would you bring to the office? 
obviously 12 and a half years of experience of spending time interacting with business owners on the street, interacting with citizens. I've been going door to door lately. I've gone door to door in four campaigns for city council in the past, as well as door to door in a Multnomah County race in 2008. I think I have a history, I'm sure I have a history of interacting with businesses to assist them. I'm currently working with a, an owner of a business in conjunction with Matt Wand um, to straighten out a situation where the uh, state laws don't really make a lot of sense and aren't very helpful for businesses. I have, like I said, been attending the majority of the East Metro Economic Alliance meetings. I think I have a good pulse on what's going on in the business world and it's what's going on with the citizens. I interact with them as often as possible. I get approached by citizens on the street and stores all the time and I'm happy to help them out. If I'm not an expert on what their question is about or their concern, I know who at City Hall to send them to. And that's what I excel in is, is being a people person and working with the constituents and the business owners in my city. Thank you. Brian, the same question. What experience and expertise would you bring to the office? Well, my experience and expertise generally center around business. I've been part of a family business that has been around the Northwest for over 100 years. I've personally been in the business for 20 years. We, hold, we have multiple uh, employees, we do millions of dollars worth of business, and we have a long history of contention with trying to build with the city of Portland. Uh, we attempted to build a $3 million business complex that we got sideways with the city of Portland on because of a, a arbitrary line that was thrown through our property. Uh, after months of negotiations with the city and tens of thousands of dollars, we gave up the project because it was just an insurmountable project to be. So I'm intimately aware of the role of government has in dealing with businesses. Um, I've been intimate recently with a business that has been moved to Fairview and helping smooth the way with our government in trying to get their permits through. So I believe that I'm a people person and was able to to deal with people on an intimate level and get jobs done. Thank you. Tammy, the same question. What expertise and experience will you bring to the office? So as I mentioned earlier, I'm a registered nurse. Um, as nurses, we advocate for our community. We advocate for people. It's part of who I am. It's in my nature to care for not only the people that I work with, but my community, first and foremost. Second, um, I mentioned that I have over 20 years of experience of working in the community. I also own a business in the city of Fairview, which I think gives me a unique perspective um, from most of the people on city council in that um, knowing exactly what kind of struggles we face as businesses, I, I'm able to advocate for our business folks also. Um, I also feel that you know, as an advocate and as a business owner and as a nurse um, with an extensive amount of experience that I can bring a perspective unlike some of the other folks that are up on um, currently in our city council at this time, thank you. Thank you. And going to the next question, we'll start with Brian this time. What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Fairview in the next five years? I mean, I got that same question earlier. Uh, budget, 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 budget. All other, all other issues within the city all stem from the budget. Uh, livability, roads, sewers, um, anything having to do with Fairview is directly tied to our budget. So being fiscally responsible with our budget is a huge priority. And finding those new revenues, wherever they may be, is also a huge priority. Uh, develop, economic development is going to be a key cornerstone on, in the coming years. Um, I've recently at the Fairview Economic Development Committee have suggested a program of microloans 
for new business startup, for property enhancements. Um, it's something that we will be discussing in the coming months and hope that Fairview will have a, pro a program by the beginning of next year. So budget, 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 budget. Thank you. Tammy, same question. What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Fairview in the next five years? I would have to say budgetary concerns. Um, the League of Oregon Cities indicate that over the next three to five years, our budget outlook does not look good. Um, as a city, we need to be very proactive and not reactive. We've spent over $600,000 in reserves over the last three years alone. Um, we need to make some changes in the way we do business. We need to um, look at economic development and look at this seriously. We need to develop relationships with private partnerships, ones that will allow us to fill in those gaps. I don't think that we're doing a good enough job with that right now. We've got a lot of room for expansion in that area. Um, fees, free enterprise zones. Um, we need to enhance our current enterprise zone. Um, we do have one that we currently um, work with the city of Troutdale and East County on, but it's not comprehensive enough. We, we need one that is inclusive, not just for large, large businesses. We need one that is also geared towards small businesses. We know that if we work with small business organizations, that they are the heart and soul of America. If we can work towards allowing them also to see some of the many benefits that some of our large corporations receive, I think we'll, we'll be able to keep that money inside of Fairview, and that's really where we need to put, make our focus. Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, same question. What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Fairview in the next five years? Well, I hate to be redundant, but it is the budget. It's the budget for all the cities. But there are a lot of things other than um, the budget that need to that we need to make sure we, we keep. We need to keep our city livable and sustainable. We need to be able to keep our wells, keep our, our sewer system, keep keep our police force those things are what make the city livable those things are what make the businesses want to come to fairview and the homeowners want to stay in fairview they want a place where they can feel safe and where they can feel that their children are safe it's a place where i see in in 20 years the children who are growing up here today will stay just like 30 and 50 years ago people who were born then are still here and that's what i would like to see for the future as for the budget we do have to be very pro proactive and and we have been the city of fairview has pinched every penny possible and there's still going to be some more pennies to pinch but every little penny works the other thing we need to do is fill our vacant business properties there are so many vacant properties out there that are already developed that if we can fill those, we can actually bring quite a bit of business to the city. Thank you. Ken, same question. What do you consider the main issues facing the city of Fairview in the next five years? Let me get some easy ones out of the way first and then I'll tackle the economy. Um, 10, 11 years ago, when we had council goal setting sessions, I was very uh, vocal about bringing recreation back in our parks and recreation. We've had lots of bird watching opportunities and benches for sitting in the grass, but we didn't have playground equipment. And um, I helped push playground equipment. We need something for our children to do in the parks, keep them out of trouble. I was active in um, trying to start a skate park for Fairview. Unfortunately, there's no money for that. So it all does boil down indeed to money. Everybody's identified that, but and everybody's saying, well, we need to do this to, to get the money in, but nobody's coming up with the ideas of, of how we're going to do that. I listened to Troutdale, um, Councillor Doug Douse talking about a program that they did of removing fees, and he said it was very successful. They've, they've managed to fill some empty stores. I think we need to do something like that. We're already involved in an enterprise zone, but the biggest problem is that only puts us at an even 
playing field with everybody else. We need to, in Fairview, enhance that to where we're looking better than the other cities around us. I'm deeply concerned that when we pinched pennies, what we did was we removed the position of economic development director not only for the city, but the shared position with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. We eliminated two people from our staff in community development, and that's just the opposite of what we need to do. We need to spend our money and our, our dipping into reserves needs to go to fund those positions to make us stronger and wealthier in the future. Thank you. And for the audience, if you have some questions for these candidates, be sure to write them on the card and raise your hand so they can be picked up, please. Okay, we'll go to the next question, which we'll start with you, Tammy. How would you increase citizen involvement in the city of Fairview? So let me first start off by saying is that I wholeheartedly believe that volunteers are the backbone of our city. That we need to treat our volunteers with respect and um, allow them to do what they do best and to shine in their expertise. Um, I've, as I mentioned earlier, I've been in a lot of different organizations and committees and have had the opportunity to experience committees and organizations that work really well and recently had the experience of working with one that didn't work so well. Um, I can guarantee that I will put every effort into ensuring that it works well for our citizens in the city of Fairview. Um, I think it's important, one idea that I have with regards to um, working within the city confines um, from my personal experience would be with regards to liaisons is really define that role to ensure that the liaison is in fact just there as a support and that that position isn't there in the nature of um, making decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian, we'll pass it to you. How would you increase the citizen involvement in the city of Fairview? Well, as I said earlier, I attend all the committee meetings, and these are all volunteer positions. We are all volunteer positions. Uh, I think to, to get more volunteers is to take a lot of their conceptual ideas and see that they go all the way through city council and are implemented. And then when they are implemented, give credit where credit is due to the volunteers who come up with these concepts and who come up with great ideas. Uh, every committee meeting has somebody or some idea that really should be blossomed into a, a structural idea that, that benefits the city and all the people. And I think if you, if you wave the flags enough, people will see that their ideas do come into fruition and you'll get more of it. Thank you. Ken, same question to you. How would you increase the citizen involvement in the city of Fairview? That's always been a challenge. Uh, probably about 12 years ago, I got involved in our first goal setting session at council and one of the first things that came out of my mouth was how do we do that? Why can't we get more citizens involved? Um, I was told it's really tough, you're gonna have a tough time trying to do that, but I it, succeeded in getting that as a council goal. I think communication and nurturing is very important in there. You need to communicate with people when they talk to you. They say, I'm disenchanted with this or what's wrong with that, I don't like this. You talk with them, you say, come to city council meetings. You have a spot on the agenda, you can talk. We listen to them and we make changes based on, on citizen input. Uh, we do have and always have had spaces on committees. We have implemented um, online applications on our city website. But once they get on a committee, you, you need to nurture them and you need to communicate the idea, the plan, where you want to see this committee go and work with them to help them envision the same thing that you do and follow through with it. Thank you. Barbara, what 
I have to agree with the three of uh, everybody up here. Being last is kind of like, okay. Um, Tammy's right. We need more volunteers, and we need to nurture the volunteers. Um, Brian. Brian, thank you. Brian is right. I'm getting old. <laughs> Brian is right because you do have to go out and seek them out, and I think the city of Fairview has done a great job of that. Um, I can't think of a committee. I'm, I mean, I... I know that you said we've got openings, but I can't think of a committee that we've got out there that has openings. We have, every committee we have is filled with volunteers who care about what committee they're on. Um, we have people in line to get on the Parks Committee. We have people in line to get on the, um, the Police Committee. There are people out there who want to do it. We may have to enlarge our committees. We may have to do some other things. But more than anything, we just have to be open and make sure that they know that they can do that and that they can just be themselves, just like we on council are ourselves, everybody on planning. We all bring our expertise to one to to everything and and uh, we we have a great city. Thank you very much. Okay, we'll start with Ken this time. A uh, question from the audience. Candidates have raised concerns about Fairview's business friendliness. What can you do as a city councilor to make it more friendly? I think I've covered that already a lot. Um, I don't know if I can add to it anymore. There's a mayor's roundtable. There's Fairview Business Association. There's always the opportunity to go to businesses and interact with them, ask them what their concerns are. I think as far as attracting new businesses, and that's what we need to do in the future to increase our tax base, we need to, as I've said already, we need to take a look at fees. That's something that I championed about 10 or 11 years ago. At the time, it fell on deaf ears. We need to do everything we can as a city to assist new businesses, we need to look attractive for businesses coming to this part of town. And the only way to do that is to out manipulate the other cities in East County and look more attractive financially for them. That's what it's always about. Startup costs for a business are, are high. And um, so I think that we need to focus on that. Thank you. Barbara? Could you repeat the question, please? Candidates have raised concerns about Fairview's business friendliness. What can you do as a city councilor to make it more friendly? I think you need to define business friendly first. And until you have an, uh, a really good definition of that, you can do everything that um, Ken has suggested. What we have now is a lot of things. We do have the Mayor's Roundtable. We do have the Economic Development Committee. We do have the Free Enterprise. And we have great staff who, ha who go out there and seek businesses out. We have, in the last six months, brought two new businesses to Fairview because of our free enterprise zone and because our staff is, it works so hard to, to let them know how friendly we are. They help them with the permits. They help them with the, with the state permits. We, if they can reduce the fees, they do. And if they can't, they'll bring it to council. And it's up to council whether or not to reduce a fee. I don't think we've ever had a, a request for a fee that hasn't been reduced. So we have to remain friendly to people and businesses, but we have to remain open and the businesses have to remain open that we do not do anything to raise taxes on our citizens. We cannot bring businesses in and go so far that the taxpayers end up paying the bill. Thank you. Tammy, same question. Do you need it repeated? Uh, no. You know, um, this is news to me, and had I known that I could have had some of my business fees reduced, 
gosh, I would have been all over that. <laughs> um, so I think maybe part of that would be as far as being business friendly. So all for one, one for all, let's share the wealth. And uh, if those fees are negotiable and adjustable, let's make sure that everybody is aware of that. Because I know I certainly would have been appreciative of that. Um, as far as, as uh, making it more business friendly, I think, you know, we've, we've kind of encapsulated one of the key pieces of having a business friendly environment. And that is, is being able to work with those businesses in a friendly manner. Um, you know, it hasn't always been that friendly, and I and I can tell you from personal experience, um, from getting permits to getting assistance to kind of getting stonewalled and and uh, um, having questions, and then having phone calls returned days and weeks later, applying for permits, and what permits should have taken a couple weeks end up taking several months, um, having to go down and follow up. Uh, week after week after week to open my business. I don't know that that's necessarily business friendly. I know we've made some changes and we're moving in the right direction. I think we still have more room to grow. Thank you. Thank you. Brian? Business friendliness. That term tends to grate me somewhat wrong in that it, it's undefined. It's, it's vague. It's, a, it's an easy statement to make. My ex eight months experience in Fairview is we are extremely business friendly. As she mentioned, we have two new businesses that have moved into Fairview because we're friendly, we're economical, and we made their transition very easy. Uh, we have a third one moving in, more excavations coming in. Um, so I'm not sure of what they talk about in the past. I'm only concerned with what's currently going on. And that term business friendly tends to, I am extremely business friendly. I want nothing better than to have businesses in Fairview doing what they do. Unfortunately, the Fairview Business Association has fielded people against me claiming, I'm assuming that I'm unbusiness friendly. Um, however, I am very business friendly and that tends to rub me a bit wrong. Uh, I see throughout the city that we are very friendly. We're proactive. We're very helpful everywhere we go. And I would be the first person in line to challenge the city if I saw anything. So that's what I would bring to the city is to help where I can. Thank you. Another question from the audience. And we'll start with you, Barbara. What are your ideas to enhance revenue in the city of Fairview? Well, I think that's, that's something we've talked about all night and has been the focus of the election this year is an economic development. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not the businessman that, that Brian is or that Tammy is um, because I, I just work. I, I work in a business, but it's a, sex, a successful business, and I've watched what they do, and they are good to their customers. The businesses in our city are our customers. The citizens in our city are our customers. So we have to be good to them both. As for increasing the revenue, it's something that council is actually going to have to sit down and brainstorm because one person cannot make that happen. It has to be the full council and we have to have some ideas to pass around between each other and really work with staff on things. That's about it. Thank you. Tammy, what are your ideas to enhance revenue in the city of Fairview? So again, um, to enhance revenue, we have got to find new sources. So one source, I know that there was an announcement made on Tuesday um, that we are going to be, uh, the Providence is going to be breaking ground in the city of Fairview uh, in 2013. That's wonderful. That's great news. How that works is we have a business there, instead of vacant land sitting there and basically paying 
you know, nominal $45,000 a year in taxes, whereas we have that business income um, or that business tax revenue base that we have is the, it's like apples and oranges. It's a huge amount of difference as far as revenue that's created um, from a, a, a business compared to vacant land sitting there and paying property taxes on that. So that is how we're going to increase our revenues is we have to get that vacant land not vacant anymore. We've got to um, offer incentives to businesses to make Fairview be the number one choice for economic, for development in East County, and we can do that. Thank you. Thank you. Brian? Where are we going to get revenue? Uh, great question. It's once been kicked around in every committee everywhere. Uh, on the parks committee that we were, that I sit on, we talked about doing a parks levy t for the cuts that we had to do to the budget uh, that cut our maintenance down in half. We had limited all of our community events and really the only thing that we could come up with was possibly a three-year parks levy. Um, and throw it to the people of Fairview, ask them, are, are you willing to put a little bit more in taxes to gain the parks that we have so enjoyed up to now. Bring back all the little festivals and, and community events that we had that, that spurred so much joy with our kids throughout the years. Uh, and the EDAC committee that I sit on, we're talking about setting up a program for microloans uh, that would spur business, bring startups to allow companies to expand, uh, bring new employment. So each committee has their own little ideas and it's really gonna be up to the community to decide how they want to do it or we wait and let the economy re re rebound on its own. Um, but again, that's for the citizens of Fairview to ultimately decide. Thank you, Ken. I don't think we can afford to sit and wait for the economy to come back. I think we need to do everything we can to market the empty land and the under underdeveloped land. We need to get the tax base built from filling all these empty properties. And we need to figure out some way for the city to make money, if we can, in private public partnerships to do that. I also think marketing is very important. In the past, I've seen cities that have, or even states that have programs that say, we're open for business. As I'm walking around the neighborhoods lately, I'm carrying my palm cards in a green canvas bag that says, shop local first. I got that from a program in East County here a couple years back, maybe three years back. That was a very successful program. I'm still packing that bag around, showing it to everybody that I see. That's the type of thing that we need to do. We need to send letters out. We need to get website information out that says we're open for business and we're going to be more attractive financially for you to come to Fairview than anywhere else. It's marketing. Thank you. Now we'll go to the two-minute closing statements. And we'll start with you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Again, I want to thank everyone here tonight and especially the League of Women Voters for putting this together. One thing, really the only thing that's come out of tonight and this whole campaign is we need more money. We really do. And how we're going to get it is not going to come down to one person. One person is not going to make the difference in Fairview or in Gresham or in Troutdale. It is the collaborative work of the city council the planning commission and the city staff who are doing everything they can to let people know that we have property out there ken says we you know we need to market staff is marketing absolutely and they have brought to the city because of their marketing three new businesses one of those businesses will hire 116 local people. That's, that's pretty good for, our, for, you know, for six months of marketing. So we need to do things that work together 
We don't work one at a time. We come together as a group and we try very hard to come to a collaborative decision on what we are going to do. And I do believe that the city of Fairview has already been very successful at that. I will continue to do that. I will continue to be a collaborative member of the council. And I will advocate not just for businesses, but for the citizens. It is the people of Fairview who make our city. And without those people, we have nothing. And we don't need anything. Thank you again. Thank you. Ken? Well, you know, I, I hear all these things about how the city did this and the city did that. Um, it's my understanding that Berkshire Development has been marketing their own property. I said earlier, the city laid off or did not, chose not to fill the position of economic development director. It's combined with public works and they've got a long list of projects and a short list of staff. We laid off two people from that department. Um, so I'm wondering who's doing the marketing. We need to get back into spending our money, spending our attention on getting experts to do that. The city obviously isn't an expert. The Providence groundbreaking, they bought that property years ago and have not chosen for whatever reason to move until now. So I don't see that anything that's happened in the last two, three years in Fairview has been because of the city council directly involved in bringing those businesses here. Somebody else did it. The city needs to be proactive in attracting the businesses, and we can't do that when we've laid off the staff. I, yes, I agree that we need to collaborate, but we need some fresh ideas. What we've done hasn't worked in the last three years. We've gone into reserves $600,000, and that was a big chunk of the reserves that it took us many years to save. We've got to have fresh ideas. We can't go with the status quo. It's just not working. We need to think forward and come up with funding to sustain the city in the future. I think I'm the best person on board to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Brian? Well, I'm going to play on his words. Fresh ideas. This is what I've brought to Fairview for the last eight months. Um, as, a, as I've alluded to many times, I go to all committee meetings because I like to hear all ideas. I want to find new ideas and forward them through the city council and implement them so that Fairview can be prosperous, that people can be proud of their city for the ideas that they help develop. And I think that I will bring fresh ideas, fresh energy to the city council. I will be the youngest, I'm still the youngest person on city council. Um, and I hope that the, the citizens of Fairview allow me to continue my father's legacy of public ser service. And that's all I have ever want is just to be a public servant, to do the bidding of the city, the city of Fairview citizens. Thank you. Thank you. And Tammy? In our current economic status, we've got to make some changes. What we've been doing where we've come from you know it, it, the city of fairview has a placard and it says a community of history and vision we've made a lot of progress in the city of fairview and we've had some amazing vision i think we're at a stalling point especially with the state of the economy we've got to have some new blood some new energy um, and some new ideas I think I am that person. As I mentioned earlier, I have a business. I know where those struggles are. I can bring the perspective of a business person to the council, share that perspective. Um, as a nurse, you know, I work to advocate for, for our community. I do that every day. And I don't plan on stopping that, irregardless if I am elected to city council or not. I will continue um, my personal mission, which is to better our community. Um, 
as we move forward as a, a, as a, as we move forward as a city um, we've got to have the leadership and we've got to have the experience I think I'm that person to move us forward thank you thank you all this has been very interesting and wish you well thank you again thank, thank you. you very much we'll take a a break now. <laughs> <laughs>